Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we are going to learn about another important concept in Java multithreading. Today we will see cyclic barrier in action. In case you have missed any of the previous videos, please check it out from the playlist link given in the description. Also, if you want to access any specific section of the video, like you want to skip the theoretical part, then you can access the implementation chapter from the chapter list given below. Now without any further delay, let's start. Now imagine you have a group of friends and you all want to go on a trip. But before you start the trip, you decide that all of you will gather at a meeting point before you actually begin the trip. You do not want to leave anyone behind. In Java, a cyclic barrier is like a meeting point for your friends. It's a way for multiple threads like your friends to come together and synchronize their progress before moving forward. So suppose few friends have reached the meeting point first, maybe because they are quick. But to start the trip further, they need to wait for all the desired parties or friends to reach the same progress which is reaching that particular meeting point in our case. And once all the friends reaches the meeting point, then the trip will continue further. For such scenarios, cyclic barrier will be able to help us in implementing the required solution. A cyclic barrier is a tool that helps a group of threads wait for each other at a specific point in the execution of a program before they can continue with their further processing. All the threads must reach a common point before they can move on to the next task. Now let me try to implement the solution for this problem using cyclic barrier. First I will create a friend class which will extend thread class and override the run method. Let me quickly code it first and then we will have a detailed code discussion. So now we have this friend class which is extending the thread class itself and we have also overridden its run method as well. Now let me go through the complete code and we will discuss what we have done here. First we have defined two instance variables. One is of type cyclic barrier and other one is of type string. So in the second variable we will be storing the name of the thread or we can say name of the friend. And both of these are declared final. So we have set their value in the constructor of friend class. Now let's move ahead to see the implementation of run method. Now in the run method, first we are printing that that particular friend is getting ready. And after that it is calling a method get ready and be at meeting point. So what this function actually does is it will imitate that the friend is getting ready and reaching to the meeting point so it will try to imitate it by sleeping for a variable time so the variable time sleep we have defined in get ready and be at the meeting point function so that sleep time will be ranging from 5 to 15 seconds that will depict that they are getting ready and reaching the meeting point and once that time is expired 
what we are printing that that particular thread name or friend name is ready and waiting for the remaining number of friends at the meeting point or at the barrier so barrier is nothing but it's a meeting point so how do we get the uh, remaining number of friends to get that we are using a couple of method calls on the barrier first one is dot get parties this will return the total number of friends or total number of participants required at the barrier to break it and the second method is get number waiting so this will tell you how many numbers are yet to reach that particular barrier and as for the current thread we have not yet called barrier dot await so we are decreasing one more because we will be going to do that next so the next line we are doing barrier dot awaits what it will do we will define like five friends are required at the barrier so as soon as one of the friend thread is calling the barrier dot await that value from five will be reduced to four so that the four remaining threads will be required to call barrier dot await so that the barrier can be broken and all the threads can start their further processing so till this point whenever any thread reaches this point after calling barrier dot await this particular thread will go on standby so the whatever is written after that that will not get execute at the same time so it will wait for the barrier to be broken so as soon as all the friend threads reaches the barrier and the barrier is broken then the next steps will be executed so in the next step we have written that friend name whatever is the thread name that we will be giving is now continuing with the trip so now all have reached the barrier and now they will continue with their trip so all this code is actually uh, going to throw a couple of uh, checked exceptions so to handle them we have added the code in try block and in the catch block we have added interrupted exception and broken barrier exception now let me try to write a very simple client class where we will be creating a specified number of threads and we will see how uh, we can make use of cyclic barrier So this is our main class here we have first defined one table which is number of parties that will tell how many friends or how many participants are required to reach the barrier so that the barrier can be broken. So that we have defined as a constant here and value is given as 5. So in our main method first we are creating an object of type cyclic barrier we are naming it as a meeting point and inside that particular cyclic barrier constructor we are passing the number of parties value that we have set. So that means this meeting point barrier will require at least 5 parties to reach that particular barrier so that the barrier can be broken and the other threads who are waiting for it they can proceed further after that and after that we have created a for loop and inside the for loop we are again using the number of parties because those many uh, friends are required at the barrier as well and then we are creating object of friend class because the friend class itself is extending a thread class that means we can directly create the object of friend class and execute it in case we are implementing the runnable interface then here we have to create an object of thread class and then pass the runnable as a argument in the constructor so as we are directly extending it thread thread class and friend so friend is also a type of thread now so directly we are creating an object of friend class and starting it by passing the meeting point as barrier which is having 5 as a value and friend name is uh, created using the i variable of this for loop like friend 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So this is how our client code will create 5 different threads. So depending upon their variable uh, waiting time 
we will see that how all of these threads will keep on waiting at the barrier for other parties to join and once everyone is joined then we will be able to see that they have started processing further as well now let me execute this code and then we will observe the output So here you can see all the friends have started getting ready. That means all the threads have started and with the variable time. So here you can see friend one actually reaches the barrier at first. So what we are printing here that friend one is ready and waiting for four friends at the meeting points. That means one is already at the barrier and four are left. So once friend four thread is also reached the barrier then it has printed that three more friends are left so here we can see how many uh, friends are left uh, which will be joining the other friends at the barrier so that they can proceed further so similarly once the last friend thread joins then we can see all the other threads they continue with their trip so this is how we can manage the synchronization between different threads using cyclic barrier so now if you see the concept we had discussed in the previous video which was countdown latch and today's concept cyclic barrier it seems they are doing the same thing and as we have seen earlier as well we do not have two different components doing the same thing in java so what exactly is the difference between these two concepts we are going to see the difference between these two concepts based on these five aspects let's start with the purpose cyclic barrier waits for a fixed number of threads to reach a common point also known as barrier before continuing so once barrier is broken then all the waiting threads will continue their execution the best example of cyclic barrier is workers who are building a house where each worker must finish the task in hand in the current phase before they can move to the next phase Countdown latch on the other hand waits for one or more threads to complete a set of operations or tasks before proceeding further. The best example of countdown latch is spectators at a racing event waiting for runners to cross the finish line before they can leave the stadium. The most important difference between these two is reusability. We cannot reuse countdown latch once count reaches zero but we can reuse the same cyclic barrier even after barrier is broken. When the barrier is broken, the count resets itself to the original value. So in our case, it is five. So once the barrier is broken, the same object will reset itself again back to five. The best use case for cyclic barrier could be a distributed computing tasks that require synchronization or parallel processing of data. For countdown latch, the best use case could be initializing the resources. It can also be waiting for multiple asynchronous tasks to complete so that the result can be combined together. It can also be used for coordinating the shutdown of services. Countdown latch is having lower overhead as compared to cyclic barrier due to maintaining the barrier for collaboration. Remember that the choice between cyclic barrier and countdown latch should depend on the synchronization needs of your application and specific requirement of your use case. That was it for cyclic barrier. We have seen how to implement it for a real world problem. And in the end, we have also seen what is the difference between cyclic barrier and countdown latch. I hope this video was useful to you. If so, don't forget to give us a like and share it with your friends who are really interested in learning Java multithreading. In the next video, we will cover some more concepts from Java concurrency and multithreading. If you have some specific topics in your mind, please do let me know. I will try to cover those topics as well. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, keep learning.